Hi crafters, today I'm going to create a scrapbook layout that represents a gallery wall and therefore it's great for any type of pictures. I'm also going to demonstrate how to make a fireplace shaped card using the very same supplies. So let's get started. I'm going to use a 12 by 12 sheet of uh, wood grain patterned paper as a base for my layout. The patterned paper pad that I'm using is by Craft Consortium and it's called Wood Textures. It has all kinds and colors of wood boards and I think I'll go for a lighter shade this time. So these wood boards are going to be my wall. To make these boards look even more like a wall, I'm going to add some wainscoting. So I'm going to use two pieces of milk cardstock that I trimmed down to 6 by 5 inches. Then I'm going to emboss these pieces of cardstock using the Timeless Room Embossing Folder by Paper Discovery. This one creates a floor as well as the wainscoting. So I'm placing my paper inside just like normal and sending it through the die cutting machine. Here you see the super intricate pattern that we are going to get. And then I'm going to repeat exactly the same process on the other piece of milk cardstock. And as always, if you are interested in the supplies that I'm using, I have them listed down below in the description as well as on my blog with links to online stores. So here I have both pieces ready to go and um, at this moment I have decided to trim off that chair rail at the top of the wainscoting just to make uh, those panels a little bit shorter and leave more space for my pictures. Next I'm going to color the floor area and I'm going to use the Ground Espresso Distress Ink for that. I'm masking off the floor with just a scrap strip of uh, cardstock and then I'm applying the ink with a sponge dauber. Coloring the embossed pattern is very rewarding because the raised areas pick up more color and this way you are creating even more visual texture. I'm also going to color a thin strip the leftover of the chair rail at the top of the wainscoting and I'm using the same brown ink and that is going to help this panel to stand out more against the wood grain background. Now it's time to attach both panels to the wood grain background. I'm applying some double-sided tape at the wrong side and sticking them down at the bottom of my page. I'm lining up the edges of panels with the edges of the page and this way they are going to fit perfectly. You can notice that there is a seam right in the center, but don't worry, it's going to be covered up completely. At this point, I have decided to add a little bit more ink to the pattern on the wainscoting, and this way it's going to stand out more. I'm being very light-handed, just going back and forth, and I'm using the same ink that I used for the floor. My focal image is going to be this fireplace and this die is from Timeless Room die set, also by Paper Discovery. I'm going to die cut this fireplace image out of uh, wood grain paper and I'm just choosing the one from the same pattern paper pad and this time I'm going for a dark color. So this is what the fireplace looks like. This model of a fireplace also has a screen, but it's easy to trim off if you don't want to use it. This time I think I will create the screen using a piece of vellum. So I've die cut uh, this part of the fireplace out of the plain vellum here. 
Then I'm also going to add a few flame die cuts that are also the part of the set. The fireplace is great without any screens, I think, but this time I just don't want to draw too much attention away from the photos, so I'm going to mute it down with that vellum screen. By the way, I have attached the fires onto another plain die cut, not onto the wood grain one. This is going to be the backing. So now I am attaching the vellum screen on top of that backing, and then I'm going to cover it up with the wood grain fireplace. So now I'm using the liquid glue again, and I'm attaching uh, the wood grain die cut on top of the vellum and the background. You can also go around the edges of the fireplace with the same dark brown ink, just to give it a little bit more dimension. We can also use this die as a stencil to add even more realistic details. I'm just applying the same color ink with a sponge applicator right through the die. Next, I'm going to apply some double-sided foam tape the wrong side of the fireplace, and I'm going to cover up all the um, negative spaces, all the cutout spaces. Then I'm going to inlay all those tiny pieces. I've just die cut the same image out of metallic cardstock, and I'm using just a small die cuts. I have to mention, though, that this is not the easiest way to do it. You can simply back up those areas with a piece of paper that you like. I don't know why, but I decided to go the harder way. Anyway, when I finished uh, inlaying all the tiny pieces, I peeled off the liner from the double-sided tape and attached the fireplace right in the center of the room. The Timeless Room die set also has lots of add-ons that you can use with the fireplace, so I've die-cut them out of scrap pieces of patterned paper. I've die-cut the rug out of red paper and I'm sticking it down below the fireplace, and this way it's going to cover up the portion of the seam that shows below the fireplace. Then there are also two plant die cuts with the matching flower pots. You are supposed to die cut the plants out of green paper, and then you can choose any color for the flower pots and you stick them down onto the green background. And then I'm going to add these two plants on both sides of my fireplace. Then I've die-cut uh, the clock out of gold mirror cardstock. This is also the part of the set. And I'm sticking it down right onto the fireplace, and this way that seam is going to be covered up completely. I have also die-cut some vases out of patterned paper, and I'm going to add them onto the fireplace as well as onto the floor. And as you can see, I'm creating a completely symmetrical composition here. By the way, these dies are not from this particular die set, they are from another one called Elegant Room, but that one coordinates with the Timeless Room perfectly. Now, when I have created the entire room, I'm ready to add the pictures on the wall. And of course, since uh, it's a traditional room, I will have to frame all the pictures. I happen to have a really nice frame die. This one comes with a Gemini foil press, and it also can add foiled details to your die cuts. With the Gemini machine, it is also possible to do the foiling and die-cutting at one go. So, this is what my frame looks like. I use the same cream cardstock that I used for the panels. For this layout, I'm going to use three of these frames. 
I have also decided to ink up the edges just to make this frame blend with the rest of my layout a little bit more. I have also created some smaller frames out of dark wood grain paper and the dies that I used are from the room's die sets. And this is how I'm going to position all those frames on the wall. Now I just have to back them up with the photos. Well, normally when we are creating a layout, we are trying to make it match the theme of our photos. But in this case, it's totally the opposite. Since it's a gallery wall, the pictures can be absolutely anything. It can be family photos, holiday photos. This time I'm using the pictures of flowers from my garden. All you have to do is to place the die cut onto the picture, frame the portion of it that you like the best, then you stick down the frame onto the photo and then you trim off the extra paper. When I have all the pictures frame, I'm applying uh, the foam tape at the wrong side of each frame and I'm sticking them down onto the wall. Now my layout is nearly finished, I just have one uh, tiny finishing touch to add and this is going to be a sleeping cat. I'm sticking down the cat die cut close to the fireplace and I think it's going to be the only element of my composition that is not symmetrical and it's going to add some life and movement definitely. So this is what the finished layout looks like. It was a lot of fun to put together and it's just another way to use your elegant room and timeless room dies. And now, as promised, I'm also going to show you how you can make a fireplace shaped card using the same die. Here I have a four and a quarter by five and a half card base. I'm going to open it up and I'm placing the die onto one side so that the top edge is uh, touching the fold. And then I can tape the die down. Then I'm going to build up an embossing sandwich, not the die cutting one, and I'm going to sand it through. This way I have the fireplace image imprinted on my card front and I know exactly where to cut it out. I'm using both the paper trimmer and the scissors to cut out the fireplace and I'm cutting through both layers of cardstock at the same time. And by the way, the size of this card is going to be uh, three and a half by five inches. Then I have die cut the fireplace out of gold cardstock. I'm uh, trimming off uh, the screen and I'm backing up this area with a piece of brown paper. Then I'm using the liquid glue to stick down this fireplace onto my card base. You see that the red background is showing through the cutout areas, thus creating the beautiful effect. As I mentioned, the flame die comes with a fireplace and normally you would just add one die cut inside, but I like to use three to five of those and I die cut them out of uh, different color paper and this way I can create a really strong focal point. So now I'm sticking down all the flames inside the fireplace one by one. Now it's time to add the sentiment to my card and I'm going to use uh, one of uh, the sentiment strips by Simon Says Stamp. The perfect spot to add the sentiment strip is right above the hearth. To make the sentiment stand out even more, I'm backing it up with a piece of uh, white paper and cutting it out with the scissors, thus creating a white border. I'm using the foam squares to attach the strip onto the card front. 
As a last finishing touch, I'm going to create some sparks above the fire, so I am attaching some of the gold star confetti right onto the brown paper, and I'm using the liquid glue as well as the pickup pencil. So here is my card finished. It's cute and compact and can easily be sent in an envelope. I really hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and healthy, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye!